It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Talking About Tapes. I'm the very famous YouTuber, Tony from Hack the Movies, here with someone equally or almost as famous as me, the Blue Meanie. Hello. Well, I, I try. I try. I, I try to live up to your standard. If, if you work hard every day, you'll get there. But yes, yes. Wrestling every legend. Day? Yes. Oh, well. Wrestling legend, ECW, WWE superstar. Where you at now? You're in AEW? You, you, you showed up there, right? I, I, I uh, had a cup of coffee. <laughs> and the catering was delicious. There you go. There Thank you go. Thank you, Tony Khan, for the <laughs> awesome catering that day. So yeah. Yes. And here, can you introduce yourself? I'm Mike Herman from Retromania Wrestling. A.K.A. the Blue Meanies Lackey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm riding very, on the coattails. Which is you a very exciting, the exciting <laughs> video game. Can you talk about some of the very famous people who are in that video game? Yeah, absolutely. So other than uh, the Blue World Order, yes. obviously, Blue Meanies, Stevie Richards, Hollywood Nova. We have Tommy Dreamers. We have the Legion of Doom. The Road Warriors are in the game. Cool. Yes. There you go. Uh, Johnny Retro, a.k.a. John Hennigan, a.k.a. Johnny Nitro, a.k.a. John Morrison, a.k.a. Johnny, Johnny Mundo, <laughs> a.k.a. goes on and on. Um, we have some legends like Austin Idol, Nikita Koloff, um, Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, m more recent guys. Of course, Warhorse. I can't forget Warhorse, who won our Indie Mania tournament. Nice. Um, and I know I'm missing a few guys. We have Chris Bay coming out very soon. Uh, who's c currently uh, wrestling all over the world. So. And uh, there are YouTubers in this game, too. Right? Yes, yes. So uh, one of the things is you're familiar with too many the Too Many Games convention. I'm just, very familiar with yeah. the Too Many Games convention, yes. Uh, so that just happened a little while ago. Uh, Blue Meanie was out there with the rest of the Blue World Order, and we did a stage in the game dedicated to Too Many Games. Yes, yes. And so, who are some of the YouTubers you can find in there? A lot. Uh, John Riggs is in there. RGT85 not is in Not a fan, there. not a fan. Strongly dislike. The Game Chasers. Brother. Beat them up. Would beat them up. No, nobody. No, no. I, I, I don't care for Sean Long's content. And I will write a strongly le worded letter to you to remove him from the game. Oh, uh -oh. oh. all right. Uh, I can't help but notice that my name wasn't in there, but you know. It's cool. Maybe we'll get a hack the movies for the 2022. Uh, version of that game. We're going to be please, back at too many games again. Please so, ask uh, for it. Please ask for so that. So we'll, we'll try to draw up some interest. We'll get a Hack the Movies booth on there. I'm kidding. I don't <laughs> hate Sean Long. I mean, I hate Sean Long, but I'm also friends with him. I, mean, <laughs> I feel worked, brother. So anyway, we are here today Yes. to talk about a um, very famous movie. <laughs> or infamous. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I think it's very famous. Oh, dude, it's, it's an all-time classic. It, of course. I actually saw this movie in the theater. You did? Yes. And I was the one in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit of background. Um, a while back, and this is on Patreon, we went to Astronomicon and I interviewed uh, Tony Schiavone. And I asked him, like, hey, what's the movie that depicts wrestling the best? And he picked, I thought he was going to say The Wrestler. Are you familiar with the movie The Wrestler? I am in The Wrestler. Oh, you're in The Wrestler? For two seconds, but yeah. I don't know if you know this, but... Well, uh, but uh, I, I might have mentioned on the show before, but I am technically in The Dark Knight Rises during nice. the football scene. Right. And uh, I'm about 100 yards away from the camera, out of focus, in the stadium. So we're both in really big movies, and we're very <laughs> important. <laughs> well, if I had known this movie, the, the wrestler was going to go on to be nominated, nominated for an Oscar. Uh, what a ask for some catering or something like that. <laughs> uh, no, like, can, I, can I wrestle Mickey Rourke in the movie? I feel like that'd be good street time. The, the scene is, uh, spoiler alert, uh, Mickey Rourke, uh, Randy the Ram, has the heart attack in the locker room. Right. The, he has the death match. He comes up, walks through the locker room. I'm the first, I, the blue meanie. He's yeah. the first wrestler on the, the left-hand side. Give him a little golf <laughs> clap. Right I before saw, he uh, keels over. I saw that and watched it. I'm like, holy shit, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so Tony Giovanni did not mention that as his favorite uh, wrestling movie. Nah. Uh, he mentioned a made-for-TV one from like the 70s, and I'm blanking on the name, but I'll put a graphic. I up. know which one you're talking about. Okay, yes. I, I used to have it on, I might still have it on VHS somewhere. Yeah, so he said that. It was, was an HBO movie. I forget, but he said he really liked that. And then I said, what movie depicts wrestling the worst? And he picked No Holds Bar. <laughs> Which is funny because, uh, before we get into it, to me, 
Yeah, as a wrestling fan and a wrestler, uh, No Holds Barred was the precursor to the Monday Night Wars. Really? So, yeah, t- yeah I actually I did see some notes about that, but can you go more into that? Yeah, it, well, basically, it's you know uh, Burrell, Mr. Burrell, trying to court Kurt Fuller. I just put Kurt Fuller. Oh, in he's my the notes. best. He's the he's, best. He's so. I, I'm. We're gonna get into like how insane of a villain he is. But yes, yeah. But yeah. he placed the, the role of Eric Bischoff in this movie, he trying to court does. Hulk Hogan from you know the other yeah. the WWF over to his. Yeah, Wrestling really network. did predict the, the Monday Night War. Yeah, and Eric Bischoff brought Hulk Hogan over yeah. to Turner. Yeah, and not as many murders as the Monday Night Wars. <laughs> no. Surprise, <laughs> or attempted Only murders. <laughs> they, they should have a dark side of the ring on No Holds Barred. <laughs> yeah, actually, a, a fake. Uh, oh, they did this. We mentioned in the Space Jam review. E- like they did like a fake like ESPN 30 for 30 for the Space Jam yeah. like basketball match. They should do a dark side of the ring for no holds barred. Let me make a mental yeah. note of that. <laughs> Dear Evan Husney. <laughs> so yes, uh, no holds barred. This movie was uh, produced by Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon. Shock. Th- is this the height of Hulkamania? This is like 80... 87, 88? You think yeah. so? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he took enough time off to, to do this movie. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things about this, and I think I mentioned in the Tony Schiavone interview, was uh, <laughs> I was re-watching uh, WrestleMania 4 or 5. I can't remember which one, but they was showed... Was there. You were there. As a fan. Nice. Nice. I, I watched it for you. I was looking for you in the crowd. <laughs> I was the out-of-focus guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yards away from the camera. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So One next time guy. I watch WrestleMania 5, I'm going to look for you. And yes. next time you watch Dark Knight Rises, which I'm sure is all the time because it's the best Batman movie because I'm in it, you're going to look for me. <laughs> well, if, if useless knowledge, if you know, since we're surrounded by VHS tapes, if you get the WrestleMania 4 VHS that folds out with the pop-up, yeah. they show the fan fest. I'm on the footage standing next to Ricky Steamboat. Oh, no nice. Rap, so useless knowledge since we're <laughs> surrounded by V. Has this- anyone ever asked you to sign that? Not yet. Oh, I'm the, but, maybe the first. But he's planting seeds over here. <laughs> my, my favorite thing is people have literally sent like 40, 60 copies of Darkening Rises for me to sign. <laughs> I've signed more copies of that movie than Christian Bale ever will in yeah. his life. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just anyway, working at a Christian Bale. Yeah. There. Yeah, so WrestleMania... I can't remember which one it was, but yes. they promote No Holds Barred there. I th- it was either four or five. It was one of the Trump ones. I know that. Yeah. Uh, and it always, it's so funny to look at it now because Jesse Ventura is like, how dare Hulk Hogan go to Hollywood? Yeah. That's my turf. When he's like so pissed off about it. Yeah. And the movie literally starts with Jesse Ventura. It's like, Jesse, you're in the movie. Right. What the fuck? This is Bean Teen Okerlund, along with my broadcast colleague, Jesse the Body Ventura. And I have a lot of questions about the world in this movie. Yes. Uh, but this movie is directed by Thomas J. Wright, director of episodes of every TV show you've ever watched. I, like, went through it. Literally every TV show. Like, the the stupid 80s Beauty and the Beast, a couple episodes of The Wire, a couple episodes of X-Files. I'm like, man, this guy does a shit ton of TV work. They spared no expense, expense when it came to uh, directors. A very successful director. I will give him that. This yes. is, as far as I can tell, this is only a theatrical film. You're not always handed the best thing to work with, but right. I think he did a good job considering. It's, it's kind of like when you're a, a pitcher, you got to keep your pitching arm warm in the bullpen. Yeah, right. This yeah. was him in the bullpen keeping his arm warm. I feel warm like he was week. given an impossible, like, how do you make this movie work? Uh, but I think he did a good, like, directing wise, I think it's fine. Yeah. Like, it, like it, it's, for what it is, it, 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 it's a. It's cheesy, but it's, yeah. a, it's a good movie. It's a, it's a, Especially who it was directed towards. You know yeah. what I mean? It was like yeah. 13, 14 year old. Yeah. Kids. Now, the writing Absolutely. could have been a little bit better, and I i don't think this has ever been confirmed, but the rumor is that Hulk Hogan and uh, Vince McMahon, they saw the script and they're like, we don't like this. So they spent a weekend in the hotel together, and it was the 80s, so I'm just going to guess what they were doing in there, and they rewrote the entire movie. You mean Vince McMahon ripped up a script right before filming? Just like a it's Monday hard Night to Raw? believe. Yeah. It's hard to believe. In this day maybe. and age, who saw that coming? Who would have thought? Who would have thought that he would just rip up a script? Right just up? like Ramus and Reitman rewriting Ghostbusters, right? The same oh. thing. <laughs> same thing. This is bad stuff, yeah. pal. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's my Vince. <laughs> Mini. <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of... Yeah, we, we did ECW... Uh, ECW invaded Monday Night Raw. Yeah. And I did, you know, 
little side road here. No. And then, uh, you know, Paul had his whole line up like we're meeting the Pope, but we're meeting Vince <laughs> <laughs> after all. And uh, there's Vince and Paul Heyman goes, uh, Vince, this is the Blue Meanie. He goes, Blue Meanie. <laughs> Good laugh, bad laugh. I still <laughs> I, haven't figured it out. I've but. heard about that laugh. Like I saw an interview with Kane where he was like, he pitched him the Isaac Yankum character, and then he laughed. He's like, Isaac Yankum, I yank him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <all right. laughs> oh, man. Isaac Yankum is now uh, canonically dead. If you Did you play the interactive Undertaker movie on Netflix? Not yet. Well, we reviewed it. It didn't do very well. Please go back and watch that episode. Yeah. It's actually very funny, but there's an interactive movie where the New Day goes through the Undertaker's haunted mansion. Yeah, which sometimes looks like a haunted house and sometimes looks like the mansion where they film The Bachelor. It's kind of all over the place. <laughs> but they go into the Undertaker's morgue and they read a toe tag and it's Isaac Yankum. So I'm like, all right, so in the WWE canon, Isaac right. Yankum has been alive all these years and he just recently died. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace, Isaac Yankum. It would have been great. If, we, we joked, like, it would have been great if like the other toe tag was like fake Diesel. Like it's just right. all the Glenn Jacobs characters. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's get into this wonderful movie. Starring everyone's favorite Hulk Hogan. Everyone yes. loves Hulk Hogan, right? We're all big Hulkamaniacs, right? Yeah, he, I mean, he launched, you know, an era. You know, when you think of uh, successful wrestlers, you're, you know you're successful. If you, yeah. they, you have an, the word era behind. There's the Bruno <laughs> era. There's the Hogan era. Right. Era. Yeah. Era. I don't know. Era. Uh, the Isaac. Austin era. Yeah. You know? The Cena era. You know? Yeah. yeah, whether you like him or he, or not, you know, he's vital to the wrestling yeah. business. Absolutely. And actually, yeah. let's uh, let's pause. So since I said everyone's favorite, we're gonna pause for all the comments that didn't realize that that was sarcasm. We're gonna have them yell at us. There they go. There they go. Yep. Oh, oh, that guy meant that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not everyone's favorite. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All, right, all right. I think they got all it right. out of their system. And <laughs> refresh. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the movie starts. And uh, again, I'm confused about the universe we're in. So it starts with Mean Gene yes. playing himself. Jesse Ventura playing himself in the actual WWF. And then we're introduced to Hulk Hogan playing Rip. What the fuck? What, what is going on here? Even, even Howard Finkel's there. Howard Finkel is playing uh, himself. Uh, like, yep. It'd be one thing if like all their names were different and this yeah. was like a fake federation. Yeah, it, but like if you're gonna just do the actual WWF and have the actual like people there with their character names, like why? Why is he just not Hulk Hogan? It, it, he, you mean the most marketable wrestler in the world at the time didn't yeah. play himself in a movie, which made absolutely no sense. You know, Hulk Hogan as Hulk Hogan's stretch brother, uh, yeah. but yeah, you know, he definitely could have. <laughs> like, what would have been different if he just was Hulk Hogan? Yeah, and he, they, they went so far as to not even wear the, the yellow and the red. He changed. He does colors. wear black and white at one point. Right. See, precursor, precursor, yeah. precursor, precursor, precursor. precursor. Uh, yeah, so it's just, it's so bizarre because it's like, you want people to know that this is the Hulk Hogan movie. Yes. You're putting the Hulk Hogan in it. You want him to do Hulk Hogan things, and then he just doesn't? Merchandising. Yeah. You got to sell rip t shirts now. You got to sell rip action figures but now. But you could have made like movie branded Hulkamania stuff. Yeah. Like it's just, it was a bizarre, like just change everything. It's weird that Jesse Ventura is with Rip and not just Hulk Hogan. It's just super bizarre to me. It is super bizarre. And, and uh, in the opening scene, he wrestles uh, Bill Eady, who yeah. was, uh, used to be, AKA, used to be the man superstar, used to be Demolition Axe. Mm -hmm. And he's got some weird kind of afro wig on. Yeah, he's got so, something going on. Eyeliner. They gave him. A, they gave him <laughs> they a gave perm. Him like the eyeshadow. Yeah, they gave him a perm. <laughs> it just, he just uh, very seventies disco era Bill Eady wrestling <laughs> Rip, who is not Hulk Hogan. Yeah, and like I'm thinking, like I, I was, you know, I was a kid in the nineties, and yeah. I was still like I, I caught like the tail end of Hulkamania. I probably told the story a bunch of times, and. My spoiler alert, my dad's off camera. He can probably verify this. Uh, when Hulk Hogan turned into a bad guy, yeah. that like broke me. Like, I, like that was just like, 
that was like, imagine if like Superman was real and he just went in the camera and he's like, hey, Tony, I hate you. I'd be like, oh my God. Like, I, <laughs> I stopped watching wrestling for like two years because I, you know, I was like, oh no. I'm but, like, because Hogan turned heel? Yeah, because he was like the hero. Oh. And I'm like, I'm like a young kid. I'm like, he's the best. And then he became heel. And I'm like, what? I don't I mean, know how to take this. I've been <laughs> saying my prayers, taking my vitamins. <laughs> but anyway. What am I gonna do with all these vitamins? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so even though I was like a '90s kid, I still knew the this and this. Right. So like, if I was a kid like in the '80s, like excited for this movie, I want to see him do that. Instead, he's just like rip him up, and I'm like, this is this is the late. What are you doing? <laughs> this isn't what I'm here for. No. You do that really naturally. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I've how many, like how many I times have you seen this movie? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've had I've seen it in a the theater. I have had it on VHS, and when they released the DVD. Maybe ten years ago, I went and oh, so you had the DVD, good, because yeah. I texted him. Yeah, uh, this movie, this movie at any given time, it's either streaming everywhere, yeah, or it is impossible to find. And currently, it is impossible; like you can't even rent it on Amazon. That's amazing. That's how impossible it is. But there are times where it's like it's on Netflix, it's on Tubi, it's, it's on it's everything. Just, it's so popular; it's like a Disney movie. It it's really in the vault right now. It's in the WWE vault, dude. I can't until even. They release it again. No, I right? I couldn't buy the Blu-ray. I had to buy a DVD, and it didn't come here in time. So sorry about I, that. I want the extended director's cut of of the stuff they thought was too bad for this movie. <laughs> I want to see what they went. No, nah, four hours bit, long. Yeah, I honestly wouldn't be shocked if like the director was like, "Nah, everything we shot is in the movie. It's like, <laughs> we didn't do a lot no of takes. Cuts. It's all in no there." Cuts. Uh, I'm watching an investigation. There's going to be a documentary behind the scenes of finding the extra footage. I will say, I feel like um, I actually want to work with uh, more wrestlers when it comes to like film stuff. Yeah. I had the honor of working with uh, New Jack. Uh, awesome. I actually think you saw that short film. I did a short film about. Uh, two guys who were too into Roadhouse and they become bar bouncers and they get in over their head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but New Jack was in that. We didn't even give him lines. We were just like, hey, so when the camera says action, just yell at the bartender until the girl tells you not to. And he like nailed it every single time. But I feel like with the wrestlers, they have to memorize like so many lines like every week. I feel like they like transitioning to acting is probably when it just to like line memorization is probably easy for them. I was just saying this the other day to somebody. Yeah. There's a lot of things in pro wrestling that never existed, but people thought happened yeah. and they willed it into existence. Yeah. Like back in the 70s, 80s, there was never a script. Oh, okay. You guys go in the ring, make, or if you're going to do a promo, hit these bullet points, uh, the date, the time. Well, even that, even the that. city. Is, yeah. But now... People believed it for so long that they're scripts. Now there are scripts. Now there's scripts in wrestling, which is bonkers to me. So But even with the bullet points, they probably recite the stuff over and over again, like yeah. before they go out there, right? Oh yeah. 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 That's why I feel like a lot of wrestlers, even though, even if they aren't like the best actors, not you. You are amazing. And I actually I I went too long without mentioning this. It is finally an honor to have someone from a good Swamp Zombies movie on this show. My one co star, Crystal, she for whatever reason, decided to participate in Swamp Zombies 2, which I agree ruined the series. We can all agree it ruined the series. I was a hardcore Swamp Zombie fan. Well, you know, I, I you know, it went downhill after they didn't recast me. So, yeah. I know. I was very upset about that. And you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a great hermit. You know, this. You yeah, know. I, I petitioned them. I was like, bring back Meanie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, I'm very upset, but I'm glad you're here finally gives us a bit of a uh, validity it gives us um it's my burden to bear <laughs> to uh and sadly carry crystal, on the legacy sadly crystal good. couldn't be here today uh but i hope she watches this and she'll finally send you an apology oh, for yeah. ruining the legacy of swamp zombies yes but anyway <laughs> um on the good on the good paper We're, type it up print <laughs> yeah, it on the good yeah. paper and hand deliver it please but anyway i forget where i was going with that oh. <laughs> uh back to the movie yes Rip's brother is Mark Pellegrino, who is Jacob on Lost, and he's also the hitman from Mulholland Drive. I think this is one of his first movies. Uh, he's Randy. Is that his name? Randy. Rip and Randy. Randy and Rip. Yeah. Brothers. What's that Rip short for, you think? I don't know. Rip off of Hulk Hogan. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> when you could have just been Hulk Hogan in the it, movie. Again, again, nothing changes if he's Hulk Hogan. Yeah. I feel like the only reason they named him Rip in the movie so they could say the one line, oh, he's doing his classic rip of the t-shirt. Like, that's all they meant. But Hulk Hogan That's a great point. <laughs> that's all. That's how they reference it. Because he rips the t-shirt. That's how he got the name Rip. And he played Hulk Hogan in other movies, I think. Gremlins 2 and shit. Yeah. Like, why wasn't he just Hulk Hogan? 
You own the intellectual property. It's not like they're licensing Hulk Hogan from anyone else I know. when they own the intellectual property. And I'll explain later in the movie why this even gets more confusing. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so Kurt Fuller is the bad guy. What was uh, his name? Uh, Burl? Uh, listen here, Burrell. Burrell. Burrell, yes. Burrell. He is watching. He works for a TV station, not even a rival federation, just a the TV The World station. Network. Yeah, the world. No, the World Television oh, Network. Network. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, that's a great name. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised that they get more creative because you know Vince and Ted Turner having their rivalry. Yeah, he could have done a little bit more, just take a little jab at Ted Turner. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so Rip wins the match, uh, and Kerr Fuller, he's uh, he's very upset that he's losing in the ratings every time Rip's on TV. Yes. Now I do love much though, like today. Yeah. When he wins the match, his finisher in the match, the double axe handle. Yeah. Was that, I was reading, was that his finisher in Japan? The, the axe bomber. He yes. would do it. He would do the running forearm before the, you know, big boot leg drop. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah it's weird. He didn't so, do the leg drop. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it was to cater to the Japan audience, the Japanese audience, maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Man. This These Japanese matches are pretty good. I, I've, I've watched like Hulk Hogan. Like people always say, like, "Oh, he's overrated." I'm like, watch some of his Japanese matches. He was actually really deep. He was good. No holds barred. Huge in Japan. Really? Just, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe. Well, maybe. Um, yeah. So Kurt Fuller, he's upset, and he's so evil. He has a statue of his face that he stares at. <laughs> he he sits in his boardroom looking at the statue of his face while he's being evil, like. Vince, what the fuck? <laughs> he's he's writing the network CEO as if he's like the head of a criminal organization, and he kinda is. That that's he, that's him. That's his uh, fantasy, Vince McMahon. <laughs> right? He wants to run a. I used to run New York. Uh, <laughs> a lot of crime families in New York. Uh, wink. Uh, <laughs> so he. That's he, me. He has this uh, amazing insult he keeps bringing up. Jockass! Listen here, you jockass! <laughs> I was waiting to, uh, that whole that car ride right up, up here. I was, was waiting good. to. When just, can I work in jockass? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta work in jockass. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, I'll set you up, jockass. <laughs> I want a t shirt that says jockass. <laughs> Listen here, jockass! <laughs> I love um, it. So everyone's focused on Jockass. Yes. But then like the, the craziest thing he says is right afterwards when he's asking people for like uh, ideas to counter this. And the girl goes up. And he, he, by the way, he reminds the girl, he's like, you're, you're left over from all the people I fired. You better have a good idea. And she's like, what about a Zitcom? And he goes, uh, whatever. Take a leak. And I'm uh, like, Ms. Tidings, take a leak. <gasps> What the fuck does that mean? Like, I, take a hike? Yeah. Take a walk? Get Go out of here? But take a leak? Like, he, now, you could even say take a powder because that's like a, a wrestling term. Like, that means, you know, get out of here. Take a, he, Why don't you just take a powder and come back and <sighs> take a leak? Do you think, like, a whole convincer writing that? And they're like, oh, wait, powder. Guess, they won't know what it is. They'll put leak. People take leaks. And it's like. It's not really that's really apply to this scenario <laughs> again it makes you wonder what they you know what they were doing on that rewrite over the weekend i want to see All the right. original script i'm yeah. going to hit up the writer and be like hey can i see the original it's got to be out there somewhere like you know you know it's got to be like a you know, we'll get you know the raiders of Largo, law oh, lost yeah. ark we'll get him out there to uh <laughs> search <investigate>. for it <laughs> yeah investigate it you know he'll open a thing there'll be the glowing light and it's the script for no holds barred and then i used to have the fertility idol on this set yeah and then uh the cinemaster podcast stole it for their set <laughs> which is fair because i stole it from justin who's on that show to begin with right, but right. whatever so well, it's just Mitch it's much like the real indiana jones just people are stealing these idols left and right i'm so focused on no holds barred i forgot what indiana jones was for a <laughs> and you know what Credit to Kurt Fuller. Yes. Any other actor would have been like, this doesn't make sense. I'm not saying this. He's like, well, they said I got to say, take a leak. I'm going to give it my best. Right. And he really, he really says, like, take a leak. And it's like, oh, okay, wow. It's, really went for it. It's like when they gave Dusty Rose the polka dots. He's like, baby, I'm going to make these polka dots work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make jock ass work. Uh, so, yeah, he tries to figure out a way to get Rip out of his contract. And they're like. <sighs> The one guy's just like, Rip, uh, he's with third thing. He's like, they say his word is his bond, and you can't buy him out of his contract. 
Is that true? Are there any wrestlers? Uh, that yeah, he would never go to Turner. Or, <laughs> yeah, he would or never. never no. Imagine a world where Hulk again, Hogan leaves the WWF. Uh, again, precursor <laughs> to the Monday Night Wars. All right. Everybody has a price. They worked in a little million dollar man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they said the million dollar man was Vince booking himself right. pretty much, you know? Yeah, why isn't he in this movie? He should have been. He should have been the bad guy. Absolutely. He I could. mean, don't get me wrong. Kurt Fuller's great, and I'm glad oh, Kurt Fuller's Don't you the bad be smirched. I mean, they just hired Mr. him Fuller. away from the Running Man Network. Right? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Rip takes a meeting with Kurt, like, the next day or the same day. Um, right. <laughs> I love they bring him out in a limo, and they're trying to be real nice. He's like, here's my nice wooden chair made for King Louis, Louis. the Fourteenth yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Very comfortable. Very yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I did it just for you. It's like, all right, Rip, um, yeah. I'm, I want to buy you. And like, Kurt Fuller, holy shit, he shows no fear in the sign of Hulk Hogan. He's just like, you son of a bitch, like, you better take this check. I want to give you money. You're wrestling for me. And you jockass. You jockass. You jockass. Like, he legit, like, gets in his fucking face. Yeah. Like, he's ready to throw arms with him. It's well, like, that's whoa, what, Kurt. Yeah, you know, we've seen those viral videos, you know, where people, you know, have a little bit of money and they think they're <laughs> above reproach. So, yeah. you know, just he's going to get in Rip's face. And, you know, when you got but, that much money, you know. But yeah, Rip uh, rips up the check. He rips yeah. up the check. <laughs> puts it puts it into his mouth. <laughs> yeah. he it's it like another, another million dollar man thing. He's like, I'm not gonna be there here when this clears or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's his little Arnold uh, line, yeah. you know. So I hope I'm not getting ahead. Is this the scene where is, there, is have we seen the scene where Hulk's riding his motorcycle? That's later. Not yet. That's later. Not yet. That no, no. Later. no, that's the second time he sends Some, people out. Yeah. This is the first time. So okay. Kurt is upset. As you would be if yeah. Hulk oh, yeah. Hogan, I'm sorry, Rip turned you down and <laughs> yeah he gets upset that rip uh, turned him down so he sends a gang of hitmen after him and also the limo driver is in on it i'm like what okay i know like execs are shady people that yeah. probably but like why why does he have just hitmen ready to go like a gang of them by the way yeah. not even just like one or two it's the 80s yeah like what the yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but you always so, hear those you always hear those stories back in the day, you know, uh if you ever read, read like Gary Michael Capetta's book where he's talking about, you know, WCW is gonna run this town in uh Canada somewhere and ooh. mysteriously the water the pipes burst in the building and they wonder if Vince had somebody go there and you know, That's do so something funny. to the building or you know, just <laughs> you know, wrestling it, it, I, I've Re heard, wrestling on so many levels could be petty, but yeah, maybe this is another one of those Vince McMahon fantasies where he's wanted to send Hitman. Like, after I wish him. I could have sent a Hitman after Macho Man when yeah. he left. <laughs> yeah, took that Slim, Slim Jim, Jim contract. <laughs> a coworker made fun of me. Uh, we went to a convention, and I was like, I need like a snack, and I bought like a Slim Jim. And she's like, That's what you picked as your snack? And I'm like, Yeah. I'm like. Because in the 90s, I watched a commercial and Macho Man said snap into a Slim Jim. And I've been snapping into them ever yeah. since. When Macho Man Randy Savage passed away, we had a seven Slim Jim salute. <laughs> That's amazing. We bought seven Slim Jims. And Do you remember what was after the day he passed away? No. It was when that one religious group predicted the rapture was going to happen. <laughs> I forget which group it was, but they, there were billboards. It was like, right. hey, whatever. They, yes. Yeah, they were there were one on like I-95. Yeah. It's like, it's happening. So me and my friends, we had a barbecue for the rapture. <laughs> and then it didn't happen. And you had uh, Debbie Harry come out and sing the song. <laughs> rapture. Uh, but then like on, on Facebook, people were sharing. They shared a picture. It's Macho Man body slamming Jesus. It's like Macho Man died for our sins. <laughs> Now you're bringing back memories. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the other day, me and Mrs. Meany were driving down the street, yeah. and there was just two pair of shoes. Yeah. They looked like they were in perfect step. Oh. And, and she went, somebody just got raptured. <laughs> That's right. People, <laughs> people were leaving, like, their clothes and stuff. Yeah, out. yeah. I was like, we, we, just, I, we just looked straight up, like, somebody get raptured? <laughs> they're, they're, like, perfect in step, you yeah. know? So so back to the movie. Uh, yes. The scene, they're driving, he's driving them around to go get murdered. Rip is, like, trying to kick the door open of the limo and he's making the limo run around the music is so out of place in this scene it's the limo's like, been reinforced but it's like it's wacky yeah, saxophone music that? who would have that limousine like the steel <laughs> plate goes across the top the windows go up okay yeah 
Thank you for mentioning it was reinforced. Yes. So does Rip have superpowers? Of course. Because not course, only does brother. he burst through the top, Which the top was awesome. Explodes. Which was awesome. I, I agree. <laughs> it's very awesome. But like he doesn't do anything like that ever again. So it's like, what was up with that one time he had like superpowers? I wanted to see the director's cut of him on the inside going. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Whoosh. So, I heard that Rey Mysterio was inspired from his entrance. He used to <laughs> pop out from the bottom from No Holds Barred. Now, I, 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 that hasn't been verified, but I'm, I'm sure, pretty sure that's where he got the idea. But now that it's on, you put it on the internet, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gospel. Yeah. Did you pick the, the whole blue theme because he wore blue? Rip wore blue. It could have been movie? subliminal. Could have been subliminal. You know, you got to make, make a new shirt that just says mean, but uh, in the rip. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was very young and uh, you know encourageable, no. so that could have been it. That <laughs> That's a very handsome blue. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's murdering everyone. Oh yeah, uh, and as you do. He's literally like he's literally hulking out. Yeah, like and he's growling. He's like, rawr, rawr. I love the growls. I yeah, love he's the growls. going overboard on the growl. Uh, like a hound dog eating man is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he like shoves a guy through the windshield. Yeah. And then, of course, the most famous scene. Oh, the, 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 the it's pure cinematic and genius. Credit to Hulk Hogan. Like he's they told him, like, you have to be angry in the scene. He's like, I got a brother. And he doesn't stop being angry, even for the comedic pause and everything. But he does the whole like, what's that smell? And then it's. <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell? Dookie! Dookie! <laughs> so. Oh my god. So. One time. <laughs> okay. I was training with Al Snow. Okay. Uh, I like Lima, this We were doing a show and he was doing a show. He was booked in Kentucky. I went along for the ride and we had his whole van full of students. For two hours. We worked in different scenarios of that scene. <laughs> but Ooh, what's that smell? You know, just different variations of it. You know, remix. <laughs> remix. <laughs> Dookie. You know, just different thing. That's one of the best scenes in, have you ever in tried cinematic to, history. Have yeah. you ever tried to recreate it like a live show or something? <laughs> I've I've dookied. Uh, I another another surprising fact is not I'm planned. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a Green Day again was inspired oh, right. by No Holds Barred. And They're, now that you've put it on the internet, <laughs> it's they true. were in the same theater as you. Yes. And you were like, blue's a good color. Meanwhile, they're next to them put an eyeshadow on. They're like, Dookie, that's a good idea for a bit. <laughs> like a, an album. <laughs> Useless knowledge. Yeah. Since we're here, Taz and Tommy Dreamer mm -hmm. almost beat up the New Day for real in real life. The New Day or Green Day? I mean, Green Day. Duh. <laughs> like, wow, why over. are they beating up the New Day? They well, seem no, so green, nice. No, Green Day. I, I'm on board with beating up Green Day. They, they were in the, <laughs> I'll give you the abridged version. They were in the same hotel. Taz and Dreamer were sitting in the lobby after a show, and Green Day pull up in their van, and they, the girl behind the counter didn't have their reservation quick enough or whatever, and the singer, Billy Joe, is like cutting a promo on this, on this girl. And Taz and Dreamer are like, Give the girl a break. And he's like, listen here. It was like, and Taz is like, brother, I've taken pills bigger than you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it, they had to call the, it was on a Indian reservation. They had to call the reservation police in and to break the, this whole skirmish up. Yeah. yeah, I fucking love Taz. Taz is the best. I, brother. Like, I was disappointed when he came to like WWE and they didn't really do too much with him. Because, well, that's the thing. Yeah. If they don't own your intellectual property. Yeah. You're here, over here. But if they own the full rights, yeah, I did love him as a commentator, though. Oh, he's the best. Yeah, oh, he's he's hilarious. I fucking love him as commentator. And that's really Taz, you know. When yeah. once you get pit underneath the grumpy Taz, you yeah, know, that's <laughs> well, the real Taz. It's funny. I've only had one Twitter exchange with him on like DMs, mm. and it's since we're in a VHS store, I figured I'd bring yeah. this up. We posted on our Twitter promoting the game, but we had like a this this time in wrestling history kind of post. Yeah. And we had a VHS video of an ECW show. <laughs> awesome. So so Taz DMs me. He's like, hey, brother, are you selling these? What, what, how'd you get the rights to sell these? 
And I'm like, it's just a picture of the V. We're not selling VHSs. On the, <laughs> you know what I mean? On That's the, amazing. On the, on the, and he was cool about it after. He's like, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. He's like, <laughs> and it was pretty funny, though. He thought we were trying to sell the old VHS uh, ECW tapes. Do you still have that tape? Uh, I'm pretty sure we do. Okay, yeah. I'll sell uh, it. Okay. If you want <laughs> I sell tapes. I don't know if you know that. Uh, do you need uh, any version of Mac and Me? We have them. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Japanese cut, which includes yeah, the kid getting shot. That's not in the American cut. Uh, <laughs> people make fun of you know people who sell VHS, but some of those VHSs, you get an original version of the movie that changes. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have multiple Highlander 2s. I have another one up there. <laughs> Uh, the theatrical version and the Renegade cut, if you want them, they're here. <laughs> I want to get the uh, copy of Weird Science where they still have Van Halen's Pretty Woman as Kelly Brock's going up the escalator. They I'll, later they later took that uh, out and put in the song Weird Science. I'll find it. I'll find it for get you. Get on the case, sir. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Dookie. Yeah. So like, this is like Vizic Man probably... That finds this, he finds a lot of this like stuff really funny. If you listen to any podcast, they say he's got this petching for like poop humor. Yeah, and he's just like, ha, 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 I've worked with someone who's I real into poop Duke humor. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when you write for Angry Video Game Nerd, you have to deal with a lot of poop, poop humor. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, man, he really, like, you can tell he's sitting there like, ha, ha. Dude, I got it. I got it. Hulk, Dookie. I wrote Dookie, yeah. and Hulk's probably like, yeah, it's great, Vince. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Another winner, Vince. Uh, is that check clearing? Uh, sure. Uh, All right. Check clear. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the next day, Hulk Hogan is, I guess he never called the police. No. <laughs> Why would you? He probably called the police and be like, hey, uh, so I left a TV exec and his limo driver and a gang of people tried to murder me. Yeah. Like, you should probably look into that. It's bad for my brand, brother. Instead, he's cops. like, I got, I have a very important board meeting to go to. <laughs> uh, where he's meeting his assistant, ad executive, PR person. What was she again? Marketing director or something. Sure. Yeah, I think that was we'll the go closest with that. thing. Her name is Sam. I have to tan, oh, brother. Samantha. Yes, Samantha. Sam? Samantha. They're still doing that. Mona. Today. They're still doing the thing in movies where are like, yeah, you're meeting Dr. So-and-so and they're like, you're Dr. So-and-so? Yeah. And it's like, oh, yes, I'm a woman. Did you? Like, I'm like, guys, <laughs> we've been doing this. Like, we, we get it. Like, no one is in, like, no, like if someone's like, oh, there's Dr. Richards and plays a woman. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. Dr. Richards. But movies, even today, movies would be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. A lady? And it's like, yeah, we're all used to this. Uh, yeah. What year is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So Sam, she's uh, giving them all advice, which is like very basic advice. She's like, you should be doing stuff with sportswear. And it's like. Well, you think it's like rip are you this far in your career and no one suggested that like how the <laughs> fuck are you what the fuck that's like day one what the fuck are you talking about but seeing him at like, in a boardroom dresses like a super cut co- like a comic book villain around just regular people it's just so fucking funny to look at i'm pretty sure that's how hogan just dressed yeah yeah like uh, through all the 80s and then in, in the early 90s I don't know. I feel like, uh, no, because I've seen a uh, video of him where he goes to court in the 90s for that whole scandal, and he was wearing a suit. Yeah. He was wearing a I'm suit. Of course. <laughs> I'm surprised he had the, uh, the oh, sleeves cut, cut off. off. Yeah. I feel like a banker. Yeah, yeah but it's just so funny. Well, like, raise your right hand. <laughs> it reminds me of like a. You watch like the Avengers movies, and they're all out of costume except for Thor. Like, right. <laughs> it's just like, like he always stands out. They're like. Okay. What's well, right. else is as guardian guard? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just normal. This is how it feels. Like yeah. everyone's like, oh, it's a normal day of work, and oh, there's the superhero that's in the room. <laughs> it's like the day Batista showed up in blue trunks, and everybody else is wearing black, yeah. and then Blue Batista was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are real upset about that. I'm yeah, like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Everybody's like, ah, oh, we'll t- we'll tell them we're all wearing blue that day. And they- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine showing up to a wrestling show wearing blue? No, I never imagine. <laughs> Let alone make a career out of it. Yeah, I, I got plenty of uh, tweets that night. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he um, she takes him on a date, and here he's wearing a white suit. <laughs> well, she told him she did tell him to dress up. Yeah, but like his like blondish hair blends in with the white, so it just he looks like fucking Gandalf. Oh, like, okay. He looks ridiculous. <laughs> Jessica, please Photoshop white suit Hulk Hogan onto Gandalf the White from Lord of the Rings. So Sam assumes that Rip is too dumb to understand this restaurant, and the waiter also assumes that. 
The waiter is a fucking dick. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, this is the escargot, and this is that. And he's like, oh, Rip, you'll not be finding an American hamburger here. Or a hot dog. Me meanwhile, the whole kitchen staff's like, holy shit, it's Rip. Yeah. What the fuck? You want the usual Rip? Oh, yeah, the yeah, chef. Yeah, so the, the chef comes out. He's like, sorry, he's a new. You should have said our friend is here. Monsieur La who? Uh, suddenly he's Italian. Yeah. I'm, I'm Mario. He's I can't. I can't do French. It dips into Italian. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're like Rip. I call what? the Italian police. And, the, and then Rip, he knows. He knows French. Who knew? He's like, oh, I'll have the blah 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 blah. And like, and then the waiter's Brother. like, <laughs> waiter's See, like, like, we so couldn't. Maybe that's why he's named Rip because we wouldn't believe Hulk Hogan knew French. That you know right, what? That that's it. Like, we have to make right. a whole new character. Yeah, a new character. Hulk Hogan this is one too French. American to exactly. know French. Exactly. He's the American. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fixed where you just go, maybe we just don't make it a French restaurant. Right. It's like, oh, the problem solved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then again, America is a melting pot, so he should be familiar true. with all languages that if he's a true. real American. Yes. <laughs> like, I could justify this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he is tough and sophisticated. Much like the real Hulk Hogan, I assume. Much like his right guard commercial. Anything <laughs> oh. else would be unsophisticated. I forgot about those. Yeah. <laughs> Where, uh, where he's painting. Yeah. So while this is going on, Kurt Fuller, he takes his two goons. The king, Kurt Fuller. Yes. Uh, to a seedy bar to look for more wrestlers. This is a bar. And as I said earlier, Roadhouse. Uh, this is a bar where Dalton from Roadhouse would have a hard time keeping under control. Like, <laughs> yeah. even Patrick Swayze would walk in and be like, nah, too, nah, nah, no, can't do it. Can't do it. Nope. Fucking hell, what was the other guy in Roadhouse? Uh, um, Wayne Garrett. Wayne Garrett will walk in and be like, no way, Mayo, I'm, I'm out of here. Calling sick. <laughs> yeah, we're calling, uh, Dalton, we're calling in sick. We're not going back there. So this place is insane. Yes. The, they're just beating the shit out of each other. Uh, the waitress assumes they're going to a gay bar. Then you must be looking for the gay bar. The gay bar's across the street. Look, I was not around in the 80s. I don't know what the homosexual scene was like. Were they wearing business suits and glasses? Was it was that... very casual. <laughs> very casual. It's <laughs> like, so you want the gay bar? And they're like, what the That's fuck are you the talking street. about? <laughs> and then you could do the uh, Police Academy crossover and right. play the, the, the Oyster theme. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, so so there's a this, lot of dancing, sir. A so at this dancing. bar, uh, and I don't know, let me know if this rings true, but uh, in this wrestling match, you're in just a circle, and the refs goes to the bar and drinks and he's supposed to be there drinking and the match isn't done until one person can't get up yeah like a Does texas death match okay okay so that, that could be a texas death match so yeah. that is real you've been in matches like this. i have not but i have witnessed uh, many a uh, texas death match yeah I, I would like to be in a texas stay alive match <laughs> <laughs> preferably preferably you know i only uh professional wrestled once for some small promotion, we, we did a comedy match, and it was like the best match of the night. And then I uh, I won, and then I never wrestled again. So I I, I went out on top. I, I retired. <laughs> I, I once did a comedy match in England for a promotion called One P One PW against a wrestler named Kiki Taro, who's yeah. also a comedy wrestler. And this rules of the match: the first person to do a serious hold gets disqualified. <laughs> It was the hardest match I've ever done in my life. I was like, what do I do? I heard Jim Cornette gave that a five star rating. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. yeah. <laughs> and he said something problematic two yeah. seconds later. I love Jimmy. <laughs> I like Jimmy. He has me blocked. Uh, oops. <laughs> um, I, I had a little too much fun on Twitter the one yeah. day. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I know he can cut me to shreds. I just keep my mouth shut, man. I know my role. That's smart. That's yeah. smart. He doesn't know me, though. So. I, 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 yeah, I do genuinely like him. And, uh, oh, I, I enjoy, like, I don't, I don't hate, like, a lot of people straight up hate him. Like, nah, I think he's fine. I, I enjoy how mad he gets at things. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy how he gets other people it's mad. It's not the message I think people are probably, I think it's the delivery, you know? I think that's what it is, too. Because everything he says is, you know, historically factual. People you know? would agree with yeah, it. For, for it's just, he just yeah. delivers it in the worst yeah. possible way. Yeah. I love you, Jimmy. I love you too, Jim. Unblock me, please. I actually really like you. <laughs> I was just joking. I was just having fun that day. Um, Jockass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dream, though, I wanna, I wanna go to. A, maybe you can help me out with this. I just want to go to a wrestling thing 
and just shit talk the crowd and be thrown through a table. That is like my dream. Oh. Hey, we'll, we'll make that happen at too many games. Are they bringing the that, cosplay that literally, to get wrestlers again? This literally, I just want to go to a wrestling show and be like, I'm a famous YouTuber. You're all nerds. I'm way more important. And I just want to be thrown through a table. That is like, I don't know why. That is just a dream of mine. Just be thrown through a table. I'm sure that could be arranged. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can get that let's, done at too many games. Yeah, let's, let's talk after that. Let's make that happen. <laughs> I really want it so bad because, like, you know how many people would really love to see me get my ass kicked? Like, people, it would be so satisfying. <laughs> I like you. I don't want to kick your ass. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like Eric Bischoff at the end of One Night Stand. Like, I went an ass kicking that. So, like, that was the most. We're on a tirade again. That was Sorry. One Night Stand. Eric Bischoff, the, the entire ECW just beats the shit out. Of it. It's the most satisfying thing to watch. The coolest part is I was standing there watching the whole thing. I, yeah. I was in the ring watching you know, Benoit give him the diving head butt. And I, was, I was just like kind of marking out for a second. I was like, oh, yeah. this is pretty cool. Because like everyone hated him. It was just so like this is He was a perfect heel. This yeah. Is, yeah, it was perfect. Like All the pieces added up. I'm like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Just everyone coming together to beat yeah. the shit out of Eric Bischoff. I want that. I want that. <laughs> anyway. Yes. Um, Back to Dookie. Back yes. to Bischoff, Mr. Burrell. <laughs> yes. Uh, Kurt is loving all the mayhem. Yes. Because he is straight up a bad... Like, he is the... I don't think I'm getting it clear. He is the most evil person I've seen in a movie. Like, like uh, Al Pacino as the devil and the devil's advocate yes. would would see, meet Kurt Fuller from this Synapse movie. Synapsity landlord! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Al Pacino would be like, whoa, Kurt, you got to low. This is too much. This is too much. You got to pump the brakes. <laughs> pump the brakes, yeah. You're, 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 a little, you're a little too evil. <laughs> Try some decaf. Fucking Sauron in Lord of the Rings would be like, whoa, buddy. What's up? <laughs> I'm just trying to take over the world. You're just a fucking psychopath. Yeah. He's loving it. Uh, his little goons are not enjoying it. They go to the bathroom, or as it's called, the VD room. And who do they meet in there? Oh, God. Stan Hansen. That's right. Stan the Lariat Hansen. I almost threw up watching this last uh, night when they showed, like, the, the big urinal, like, uh, overflowing. Kind of I was like, Bleh. Like, oh, God. You've okay. never been to the ECW arena bathroom, I take it? I didn't. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm sorry. I was too young to go myself, and it wasn't they've, around. They've, <laughs> they fixed it up. Well, you have a chaperone? Time. Don't get me wrong. Get me wrong. <laughs> I've been in shitty bathrooms just out at the ECW arena. Like I, believe me, I've been in really, really bad. You need, you need a galoshes to walk through the ECW arena. I was, I was at some bar in Philly where there were, like, two toilets in one room and just a shower curtain divided them. Like, who would ever... Who would ever use this? Yeah. There's <laughs> like, I don't think I could sit next to another man with just a thin shower curtain. And a silhouette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. The thinker. <laughs> and like, honestly, the way it was framed, like, the person here would have to get up and walk past you to the... the they were so bizarre. Not awkward at, in the least. <laughs> so, yeah, he uh, goes to shove them in the toilet, but instead he's like, Hi, your dicks are small. <laughs> well, well, the other most quotable line from this movie... Mm. What do we got here? A couple teeny wangers. <laughs> teeny wangers. That's another t-shirt. <laughs> what do we got here? A couple teeny wangers. <laughs> He's got the it ain't even worth it. <laughs> yeah. It ain't even worth it. Ain't even worth it. <laughs> and I love the third. I love that they're like, they'll never get, they're like, Burrell's never going to get this on TV. This is impossible. <laughs> yeah. As soon as they say he'll never get it on TV, it cuts to Kurt Fuller being like, we have a new show coming wow. out. It's called The Battle of the Tough Guys. Uh, wow, what a name, huh? Now, Vince wrote this. WrestleMania. The, uh, Which... He, Howard Finkel came up with that name, so he can't even take credit for that. Well, I mean, he could have, yeah, he could have, he could have literally walked around and been like, "Hey, anyone got a name? We need a name for this thing." And like, he, brawl he got, for all. Oh God! Oh God! Th th this was the precursor. All right, the brawl, the brawl for all. all. Yeah. <laughs> really? There Holy shit! This predicted what, was, everything. So, like, did Vince McMahon is like, it, did he just like stage all of that shit to match this? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like, he was laying Easter eggs out. We were just not smart enough. But I'm thinking like you know. Survivor Series, the Royal Rumble, all this stuff, and he comes up with Battle of the Tough Guys, not even wrestlers, brother. Tough guy, or, or no, that's the wrong voice. Uh, uh, remember uh, Battle of the Network Stars? Uh, <laughs> all this new Battle of the but Battle of the Tough Guys. <laughs> that's 
That's good stuff, brother. <laughs> I'm mixing such... up my Vince and my Hulk. I don't know. <laughs> They're just become I'm one all over Vince doesn't play. say brother. No, he's yeah. not a brother guy. Yeah. Vince. They have the battle of the tough guys. <laughs> They're all beating the shit out of each other. Yes. And then in walks Zeus. Now, you thought Kurt Fuller was a bad guy. And they're like, how do we introduce Zeus? They're like, oh, well, clearly his first act is to beat the shit out of a woman. <laughs> he just picks her up by the face and throws her. And it's like, you're watching. He's like, holy shit. Like, this guy's not fucking around. <laughs> That's how they got heat back in the 80s, you, you know? And uh, as far as I can tell, he is the Frankenstein monster. Because <laughs> he's just like this. The whole... Well, the, so Tiny every Lister, time he walks, yeah. Tiny Lister was not a wrestler. Per se. No. Yeah, but... Spoiler, they try to make him a wrestler, and that I'll mention that at the end of the episode. He's walking around like the little brother from a Christmas story. He's, I can't put my arm. Yeah, it's down. literally <laughs> like what you would say. Like, now he's in great shape. I like Tiny Listen. Oh, he's oh, great. Amazing. Gone, like, Debo. He died last year, I think. Unfortunately. Uh, we've mentioned him in other uh, movies. He's great nice. in uh, uh, Roddy Piper's uh, Immortal Combat, aka Resort to Kill. Uh, he was in Wishmaster 2. We recovered that. Great actor. Absolutely. He's also in the Nolan Dark Knight trilogy. People say, like, they say, hey, what do you remember? Like, oh, I remember Tiny Lister in Dark Knight. And they say, Tony, I remember you in Dark Knight Rises. And that's that's the only thing that they can remember. Just a little out of focus. Yeah. And they're just like, who played the Joker again? I can't remember. (laughs) Some guy. So Tiny Lister, like, it's basically just like, he's very muscular. He looks the part. But they were like, act like a wrestler. And he's probably like, I don't know. Roar! (laughs) (laughs) And no one was there to be like, don't do that. Why didn't they just get another wrestler? They it, Easily, they could have just, you know, I mean, they got Stan Hansen for the movie. Could, why couldn't they just get like By the a... Way, he doesn't have many lines of dialogue. It could have been anyone. Like, I he, know. Like, what? Like, I get he's tall and stuff, but you could have gotten any wrestler for this role. Absolutely. Yeah, but I think as, as a kid, you know, I, I remember seeing him. I'm like, damn, he's a badass. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you want someone who can like... Wrestle, not <laughs> And that goes back to uh, you know Vince's thing of you know WWE in the seventies, eighties, and early nineties up until the new uh, generation mm. is all these monsters larger than yeah. life. Vince wants a guy who walks through the airport and people go, ah, that's somebody, you know. Is Vince he probably th- just saw this guy and was like, that's it, you know, Zeus. <laughs> Is Vince, into, uh, is Vince into like uh, Toho Godzilla movies? I feel like he would be. He's really into giant monsters. That's a great question. That's a <laughs> he great does qu- have a T Rex skull in his office. There you go. I feel like he's really into that uh, shit. <laughs> on the down low. I think he saw like uh, Jurassic Express and AEW and was like, shit, that's a great idea. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Can we get Luchasaurus? <laughs> <laughs> they had Luchasaurus and they released him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like they could have gotten like an actual wrestler for this. I feel like it would have went over a little bit better. God but... rest his soul. I wish you know Bruiser Brody was alive at this time. He would have been perfect to come yeah. through the, those doors. Yeah. So he then, you know, all Bruiser Brody did was the hus hus. Yeah. Hus. He could have came in, kicked some ass, and <sighs> Bruiser yeah. Brody would have been perfect. I mean, he got Stan Hansen. Yeah. Right. Him and Brody had many a few. Hansen could have got him booked. There's so many. There's so many big guys that could have went to actually had wrestling experience. But yeah. anyway, he murders everyone. Yes. Again, I. I uh, maybe, As you do. Maybe they're just knocked out. But the movie doesn't make that clear. It looks no. like he's straight up murdering everyone. Rip's trainer. Uh, he's like, I can't believe they let him out. And he's like, Do you, you know, know this guy? person? And he's like, Yeah, I used to train him, but he was too bad. He murdered a kid after, after the, the bell, bell rang. rang. <laughs> like, I don't know if before the bell rang would have made it better, but okay. Well, well if he did before the bell rang, he did get the winner's purse. So, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm fantasy person. Um, And as I noticed, I noticed this when I was watching. This is the first time I have noticed it. He's got his prison number on the thing. So that means Zeus that day was let out of prison. He didn't even bother to change his shirt. Yeah. He's probably like, when I got entered, they didn't give me, I wasn't wearing a shirt. So can I keep this one on? So he has his prison number on. He yeah. happened upon a TV that said Battle of the Tough Guys. Like, well, I know where I'm going. And, just, <laughs> and so, like, let's say he's been out of prison for eight hours. Yeah. He has now assaulted a woman and murdered eight people. <laughs> they should just, like, do a, you know. They, and won $100,000. Right. Tax free. Tax. Tax free. free. $100,000 tax free. It should be like that uh, Simpsons meme where the guy walks in, takes off his hat, hangs up, puts it back on, <laughs> right back to jail. Right, right back to jail. So yeah, Zeus wins. Kerfuller loves it. Um, 
the I I admire Kurt Fuller for ignoring bad comments about his programming. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, they said uh, they don't agree with this, and he's like, whatever. At least they're talking about right, the show. Right, right, right. Any press is good press. That sounds like Vince for. Right? <laughs> Keep it up with the gimmick. <laughs> um. Yeah, so he he loves it. Uh, Zeus goes to battle a guy at a steelworks who's just working that day. Yeah, and like, he's gonna fight him at his place of business. And it's like did he with the clear- biggest wrench ever. Meanwhile, I'm managing like the manager of this place, being like, "This is an insurance nightmare." What How do I write this off on workman's comp? <laughs> You're like, yeah. Wait, you you want a, a security team? Oh, wait, you want like a, to film people here? There, there, there's there's like OSHA violation. <laughs> I don't think you can just. There's no catering. There's no craft service. There's no catering. <laughs> I'm more worried about having spectators near the fucking molten steel machine. <laughs> yeah. I like to think it was the same steelworks from Terminator 2. And just in the background, Arnold's like shooting things. Uh, yeah, so he beats the shit out of a guy who works at a steelworks. And he's now he's wearing chain mail. That man's got a family. Yeah. Uh, and then he roars. As you do. Like, like, a, like a straight up like dinosaur roar. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> What's and my motivation? <laughs> yeah. And at this point, I forgot that Rip and Sam were in the film. Yeah. This movie spends a lot of time with Kurt Fuller and the goons. And like whenever uh, it as comes, it should. Yeah, when it comes back to Rip, <laughs> right it's like, so. oh yeah, yeah, this is a this is a Rip movie. Right. That reminds me of uh Burton's Batman. When you Whoa. watch like Tim Burton's Batman, it's like Michael Keaton's not in this that much. Yes. <laughs> this is a lot of Jack Nicholson. And a lot of Jack Nicholson and Kim Basinger, and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, Batman's here. It's like, oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, by the way. So Rip uh, takes Sam to a diner, and I guess they were they didn't have enough action beats, so muggers come to rob the diner. And even though they have guns that I assume Doesn't work, they are not shooting because Rip is throwing pies and cakes at them. Much like uh, the teen uh, child cinematic movie uh, Bugsy Malone. Huh? <laughs> With Scott Baio. Yeah, with Scott Baio with that cream <laughs> pie guns. Yeah. Yeah, so he's throwing all that stuff, and uh, he beats the shit out of him, and he saves everyone because uh, he's a hero. And Sam's like, wow, what a great guy. That movie's just, that scene's just like a fan. Yeah, yo, cuz, I was there. Guys had guns. I just, I said, F you, pal. Here's a pie. Here's a, here's a tapioca. Yeah. <laughs> and the guys with the guns just suddenly didn't know how to use their guns. Yeah, they were stormtroopers. <laughs> But uh uh-oh, they booked one bed in one hotel room. Wink. Um, yeah, it turns out that was not the case. But uh, they she goes to brush her teeth in the bathroom, and he wants to brush his teeth, but he has no sink, which is very awkward. I don't know why she didn't just wait until she was out of the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, take turns. Rip. Yeah, weird comedy. But uh, he's busy building a wall in the middle of the room as a divider. Yes, of course. And it's uh, like, ah, oh, yes. How do you like your accommodations? I love, I love Hulk Hogan's fancy voice. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, Again, his right guard voice. Yeah. Anything else would be. Yeah. Unto- what did he say? Like earlier in the movie, he's like, uh, I only focus on my charity, charity. work. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm just waiting for him to have like a little teacup. Uh, but yeah, that's the like, voice he uses in front of the judge. Yeah, you know? it's like, hey, Rip, actually, <laughs> your honor. <laughs> I was like, Rip, if you're really a gentleman, just sleep on the floor. You don't even bo- you don't even bother to call the front desk and ask for a cot or anything. Right. No. <laughs> He's like, no, I taped up a sheet in between uh, that'll us. That'll work. That'll work. Many of pro wrestlers have slept on the floor or you put the mattress on the floor and somebody takes the box spring or something like that. Let her <laughs> let her have the mattress. Well, look, look, he, he's. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not a jobber. He's Rip. OK, yeah. he's not settling for less. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they build. There a was wall. a reason he wore a red thong that night. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so she comes out in her bra, even though she's supposed to be all like, "I'm not I that don't kind like of woman." It. Yeah, so she comes out in her bra, uh, and his shorts are just being eaten by his ass. Like, they were very hungry. Like that. It's just <laughs> I know, I know what his ass looks like because those shorts are just eat. Like the crack is just absorbing those shorts. Um, she also says she doesn't go on dates because she works too much. She's like, I don't, I'm not that kind of girl. I, I don't do that. But uh, here's care. me and my bra. And I'm yeah, I don't care how much your shorts are being eaten by your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the most bizarre thing. Yes. This scene was like uncomfortable to watch. Yes. She wakes up in the bed shaking. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. And then she 
moves the curtain. I guess these are his heels, but yeah. they look like a butt going up and down. Yeah. This movie has, I believe, for children. Uh, it was an odd scene. Yes. And then it turns out he's just doing like furious push ups yes. in his underwear in the middle of the night. Yes. With a, a divider that he built. And, and he's, you, oh, he's putting his feet up on the bed. Yeah. To move the entire To make bed. sure it's shaped. You see some very calloused feet. He could have used some lotion on those beds. Yeah. And he's <laughs> just like, uh, don't let me keep you up or something like that. Yeah. What was that line? What the best line. Well, not the best line. Another, you've built more walls than I ever could. <laughs> <laughs> so, so meanie, I'm not a wrestler. Okay. Except um, once. But do, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> <laughs> do 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 wrestlers often in their workout routine? Do they have to wake up in the middle of the night to do furious push-ups? If your name's Bob Holly, yes. Okay. Uh, Bob Holly uh, was notorious for waking up at like 4 a.m. and going to the gym. And one time, oh wait, he went to the gym. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he didn't just use the bed oh, in no, his no, hotel no, room no. and shake the bed. No, but I gotta tell the story because one time Al Snow was rooming with Bob Holly, and. Uh, he had to go up and he, he went and took a leak, you know, like Burrell demanded of his yeah. employee. And like he, he was going to the restroom, he was going to the bathroom, and he heard Bob Holly stirring his sleep and he just froze. He went, because he's afraid if he woke up Bob Holly, Bob Holly would be like, oh, you're up, let's go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> he clung to the wall like Ivy. Just <laughs> <laughs> but no, Bob Holly went, actually went to a gym. I like, uh, I have the uh, the Grilling with JR book. Yes. And I made the uh, Bob Holly meatballs. And they're actually pretty good. I tweeted him and he didn't share it. I'm like, hey, man, I just ate your balls. They're pretty good. Oh, they <laughs> phrased it that way. <laughs> what? I had a picture of the meatball. <laughs> How's wrestling. your whole family? How's your whole <laughs> family? Um, I do like Bob Holly. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. This is when he gets into the bed and it yeah, breaks. And, and then he does the whole, you built more walls. I'm going to sleep in the lobby. It's like, now you're. Now you came up with something less hard. Couch in the lobby. Your rip. You couldn't get your own penthouse suite. You know, you had to get. Yeah, and, that, and that hotel in itself was pretty. It, this is the, the where the company booked them. For a guy who's the ratings winner of the right. network or, or anything, you know. Just, <sighs> it's like Motel 6. Remember, or, her people booked it. Right. And we know who we find out who she's working for. Right. It's all yes. been manipulated. Yes. Um. Yeah, so it turns out Kurt Fuller is behind it all. She's a spy working for him. Why? The mole. I, yeah, why I don't know. Uh, but he's like an asshole. He like slaps her, and the, even the goons are like, "Well, that's a little too much." And yeah, he should be like, "Sorry, I've been hanging around Zeus too much." This is, me and Zeus. <laughs> this is the way you act, apparently. Me, me and Zeus, we hit up the town. We're just slapping people at the right. Then there, there's a there's a uh, montage right there. You know, yeah. just <laughs> walking through town. Yeah, so Sam finally tells Rip who she is and what Kurt did to her, and Rip is not happy about it. But now they're in love. Rip is ripe. Yeah, they they are suddenly in love, yeah. I guess. And as they're making out, Zeus is on TV, and he's like, Rip, I know you're out there. Is this like the Rock? I think they wanted this to be like the Rocky Three. I want Balboa. I yeah. want Balboa. Yeah. I want Balboa. Hey woman! Hey woman! Fucking Rocky Three is the best sequel. I don't care what anyone yeah, says. I know everyone is. loves Rocky Four. I didn't see the new version of Rocky Four. Not yet. Yeah. yeah fucking Rocky Three is the best. Yeah, Mr. T awesome. is like the best bad guy. Yeah. Because yeah. he's he really he really humbles uh, Rocky. He's yeah. like hey, you get a little too uh, overconfident he, there. He knocks him down a quite a, a yeah. quite yeah. a few pegs. But then he becomes overconfident. He didn't learn from his own. His own. Yes. That's there's his a, undoing. At there's the a end. lesson to be. Learned. There's a lesson to be learned. The more long. you know. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> so he calls him out, and he's not looking at the camera, which makes it even funnier. Yes. <laughs> and I know Tiny Lister had an eye thing, but he like he legit isn't even facing. No, the what his? Well, I was noticing that too. But yeah. actually, his one eye is looking at the camera. Oh, it is. It is the one eye. the The back eye is looking at the camera. But they didn't have him that. face the camera. No, but they didn't have him face it. So it wasn't the front eye looking at the camera. It was his back <laughs> eye because his head was turned. It was the security camera. Yeah. Eye. Yeah, um, so Rip is at a charity event where he's teaching kids wrestling. Um, as you do. As you do. As you do. And a helicopter shows up, and it's Zeus and Rip. And they meet in person, and Rip's like, are you going to challenge him right now? And Rip's like, 
no. <laughs> you should be like, yeah. there's no ref. There's no ring. Like what? This isn't regulation, brother. Yeah. And then, and then uh, Kurt Fuller's just like, well, that means he's the undisputed champion. It's like, they're not in the same federation. I don't know. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, dude, dude totally, total Andy Kaufman type stuff. You yeah. know, I'm the intergender champion right. of, oh, yeah. of the universe <laughs> or whatever. You know, just, um, I just made this title up. But yeah, now that he thinks he's a coward and everyone's like, no, you did the right thing. I don't think that would have counted. Uh, yeah, there's you kids count, here. You're, you're, you're with the WWF. I don't think you should be wrestling people on another network without permission. <laughs> um, contracts, brother. Contracts. Yeah. I will say that's a cool thing about AW, how the wrestlers can like wrestle for other promotions. And yes. I kind of like, because we were robbed of that for so long in like the mainstream. So it's cool to have a big thing where people can do that. It freshens things up. Yeah. You know, it's like, sure. oh, shit, where, where, where's that guy from? He's got a belt. I should go check out his shit over there. And now that there's competition. Sorry, we're getting off a little wrestling tangent here. Yeah. Uh, I No more brand split, please. This, you know, they did uh, this brand split to, you to know, create, create their own competition. Yeah. Now they have legit competition with AEW. Yeah. No. Yeah. But that's a whole Ugh, I'm so other kind of. I'm still mad about the NXT rebrand. Yeah. 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 That, that, that whole that, that logo looks like something I would see on a hoodie down at Wildwood or something like that. What was that. wrong with the black and gold? It was yeah. awesome. It was brilliant. I think he's mad it took off. Yeah. I think he's mad it took off. He's like, I, I have to do it. And it's like, well, there we go. Again, if it's not his not idea. His idea to the moon. <laughs> Is there anyone there to actually like show him like the poor results of his ideas? <laughs> like, hey, so this is your idea. Here's how it paid off. Or uh, there's a lot of people who want to stay employed, probably. Right. So, you know. See, that's not the best. Yeah, I know. I but know. anyway, sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to mess things up with you. If they... Oh no, no, oh, okay. no, no! I, I, I say whatever I want to say. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so uh, Rip doesn't accept his challenge. Kurt Fuller sends someone else after Sam. Now, this is so weird. This is like, this is so fucked. bizarre. This is fucked. Now, again, is this where he's riding the motorcycle? Yes. 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 Okay, because so, there's a, a thing I want to point out about that. Okay, so did did uh, Kurt Fuller send a guy to rape her? That's how it appeared. Or did he send a guy to kill her who just happened to be a rapist? Either way, it's uncomfortable for this movie. I'm like, this is a little, right. a little too much for this type of movie. You can't have a wacky, oh, I put the bad guy in my motorcycle scene immediately following an attempt. Like, the, the tone of this is right. all over the fucking place. It's fucked. Uh, it's yeah. fucked. It was not well thought of. No. Uh, like, you can't have... for your, 80s standards. Yeah. You, know? you can't have, like, your hero laughing. Like, ha, 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 I threw you into a tree. Ha, ha, and it's like... Like, you can't put that in between, like, uh, attempted rape and then, cons like, trying to consult someone afterward. Like, this is this is bad writing. I'm sorry, Vince. I'm sorry. And, and it's funny. The, I think the guy there says, man, you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. That's what the, the, the rapist says. He's like, man, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. And I'm a rapist. I yeah, would know. Yeah, like, I it's know. like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, yeah, what did you want to say about the motorcycle? Because I, nobody's ever really brought this up. And I don't know if you're going to bring it up. Hopefully, I'm not spoiling anything. But there's the scene where Hulk, you know, Rip, is riding his motorcycle. And in one of the scenes as he's riding the motorcycle, in the background, there's just a random shot of a guy throwing his dog in the river. <gasps> wrong movie. No, it's Hulk. No, 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 no. Wrong. Hulk really? Hogan. Wrong movie. Really? It, yes. That is, um, fuck, what's the other one? Suburban Commander? No, no, no. Mr. Nanny. Nanny. Mr. Nanny. Oh. That is Mr. Nanny. Oh. Yes. He rides motorcycles on both movies. That's it. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you mixed up. Away. This might be a shock. You've mixed up your Hulk Hogan film. <laughs> well, I mean, he's got such a way. He's like the uh, Daniel Day Lewis <laughs> of. Uh, <laughs> He, he's got a wide spectrum right, of characters right. that he plays. I, I, I kind of want you to like mix up other stuff. You're like, yeah. So then when he got on that super boat, I'm like, no, it's Thunder in Paradise. Yeah. Like, you ah! mix up. Ah. What about that scene where he talks to Kermit? No, it's Muppets in Space. Yeah. <laughs> the scene with the Undertaker. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 that's perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, spoiler. Now, if we ever do Mr. Nanny, everyone's going to know about the dog <laughs> thing. Oh, my God. Look up the dog murder from Mr. Nanny. Yeah, just a random guy going, here you go. <laughs> I've always wanted to film like a short film where it's like 
that guy, like he hates his girlfriend, so he goes to murder a dog. Like, no one will ever know. And then he goes to the movie theater and he's like, oh no! <laughs> Who is filming? It's, oh, it's like, uh, it's useless knowledge. Yeah. I just watched a documentary on a guy who was uh, arrested for murder. Mm hmm. And his alibi is he was at a Dodgers game where they were filming Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, I saw that. I didn't watch that during. I know about that. And, and they were and, able to get the footage and, from. The and the footage got him off this murder charge. <laughs> They're wow. like, holy shit, there he is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How Thank great you, was Larry that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cue the music. <laughs> so, yeah, there was an attempt at rape, and I think uh, Rip so kills good. a guy. Again, this hey, movie appeared head first into a tree. Head first into a tree. On a motorcycle going about 40. I think they show him twitch a little yeah, right. bit, and I'm like... But his eyes were closed, so that makes yeah. me think he was still alive. <laughs> Should did the Kamala like yeah. shake. You know, anytime he gave somebody <gasps> a nerve hold. You know. So then um, Zeus kills another guy at his place of employment. He's just going to people's place of employment and murdering them. It's like Jane, Silent Bob when they look up all the <laughs> trolls on the internet. <laughs> Excuse me, yeah. are you so and so? And, and for some reason, Randy's there. Yeah, They're checking out the competition. Yeah, and then Kurt Fuller's like, "Oh my God, Randy's brother Rip! What an honor!" And he's like, "You're Zeus!" And then Zeus screams like a banshee. <laughs> and just <laughs> chokes Randy out and cripples him. He's like, "Ah!" <laughs> how, how did that go again? Yeah. <laughs> it was weird because he doesn't do yeah, it was this more scream. a little high pitched. It was a little yeah, higher pitched, but he doesn't do a scream like that any right. other time in the movie. Right. So it's like something with Randy really got into. Him. That's gonna be my new text tone. <laughs> you know what I miss? It's not on any of the uh, the app stores anymore. The Iron Sheik alarm clock. Oh my god! Did you ever have that? No, I should have. But well, I, I can't find it anymore. There was like a year or two where that was my alarm clock, and I would I would literally wake up to, wake the fuck up, <laughs> <laughs> you jump brody. And I'm like, I am up. Let's do this. Back in the day, there was an ad in the old After magazines where you could call an 800 number and, and put in your phone number, and then in the morning, Rick Rude would call you and get insult you. <laughs> <laughs> to wake you up to you know you, you put in your phone number you put the time you want to be insulted and rick rude would call up a, listen here you sweat hog or whatever rick rude would say oh that's great yeah <laughs> so yeah he he cripples randy uh rip is not happy about this he no. invades zeus's gym See, that confused me i remember like not getting if that was rip's gym or zeus's gym because there was a lot of pictures well, of Zeus rip it's yeah. Zeus's but it has gym. the big Z on the. It has the yeah. big Z. Yeah. He's got Zeus written on the ring. Right. So we find Zorro. out. <laughs> so we find out like, is Zeus like a robot? What's going on here? Right. Because Kurt Fuller has just a video running of him going like, Rip hates you. He thinks worms are better than you. Right. So he just plays this on a loop of Kurt Fuller telling him how much he sucks and how he needs to kill Rip to prove himself. Yeah. <laughs> And like Rip is just breaking everything, and I like he goes into the one room with the mirror and he sees Zeus, but it's a hologram. Right, right. <laughs> Projecting him onto a mirror. Does he run at it with the elbow? The yeah, he's like yeah. Zeus. <laughs> but I love that it's not like a Star Wars. It's clearly they just filmed Tiny Lister just standing still, but not too still. <laughs> right. On the pause, they hit the pause button. And like while this is happening, Kerf Fuller and his goons, they're watching, they're like, ha! What an idiot! Yeah, right. <laughs> what a moron! <laughs> and then, you know, Rip takes that 45 pound barbell and javelins it at right into the <laughs> camera. Perfect. Laser accuracy, Only right? But it, that. it's clear that it's someone going like this because it hits and then you see it go back out and it's like, no, it would fall down. Like, yeah. it wouldn't just be like. I'm pretty, yeah. Pretty sure. And then he just keeps messing up the gym. It's like, all right, I know you're angry, but he's clearly not there. <laughs> yeah. Now you're just being a nuisance. Yeah. Rip. <laughs> um, Rip visits his brother in the hospital. I mean, he vows to stop Zeus. And this is where he's wearing the black and white. Yes. So now he's full. He's full with vengeance and rage. Wow. 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 Yes. And who know? He could cry on cue. That was yes. a pretty impressive scene. I, I don't know how that wasn't nominated for an Oscar. No, they were, I'm really, I mean, really shocked. When, when Randy comes to, 
That's right up there with on. that's right up there with Wayne going. I never learned to read. <laughs> Oscar <laughs> clip. Oscar <laughs> clip. <right. laughs> but yeah, he's wearing the black and white to show that he is uh, turning to the dark side. So this is much like Spider Man Three or uh, R- Return of the Jedi, when Luke is wearing the black suit the whole time. It's very symbolic of that. Yes. Or that's just the costume they had for him that day. Yeah, I don't know yeah. which one. <laughs> uh, there's a kind of Rocky Four type montage where we see the bad guy training, but instead of the good guy training, it's Rip helping his brother through Randy physical therapy. Walk, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's being played back. It reminds you of the Rocky right, one. Yeah, the, right. uh, what's that song? The Hearts on Fire yep. song, I think? Rip's being followed by the KGB. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm sure, I guess it was two on the new, uh, two on the nose, him just going, Zeus, they were like, oh, let's not even bother with it. <laughs> So they, 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 he agrees to the match. It's right. going to be at the World Television Network, the Battle of the Whatever. It's in an octagon. Oh, was guy. TNA an octagon? Uh, or was it six sided? It was six sided. It was six sided. Yeah. I thought that was guns. so cool. We, um, we went when they were in Universal Studios. We went to a TNA taping and it was awesome. Yeah. Because they filmed like three. It was like 2006. So they filmed like three episodes in a row. I got to see like Samoa Joe, Sting, Christian. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. But in a way, it kind of looks like the TNA ring. or you know, It does kind of look like the TNA ring. Yeah, and Hogan went to TNA. So, you know. Yeah, I but, wish, uh, another thing I wish they would bring that there. back, the six-sided. I, I like that. That was cool. But the, and the funny thing is, Hogan went to TNA and he made them get rid of the six-sided ring. He went because he wanted the... So uh, how do you feel about the six-sided ring? People are split on it. I, I'm indifferent. Uh, yeah, I, I would have to take a bump in it to have an opinion. You've never, you never wrestled in the six side? No. Oh, okay. But I heard it could be a little confusing, especially if you're working like a tag match. Yeah, like um, I heard an interview with AJ Styles because like, he was the big TNA guy over there, and he's like, he he was like, he liked it because of how different it was, and it gave him their own identity. But he talked about how like it's easier to wrestle in a four sided ring because that's what you're more used to. So he's like, it's. Yeah. It's kind of half and half. It's like yes, we have this identity, but it's easier for newer wrestlers to come in and just get into it whereas the six-sided ring they gotta like rethink things yeah i've heard the way it's constructs it just con- constructed mm. no good with uh <laughs> big words uh the way it's constructed it's a little bit stiffer than your average wrestling ring oh so, okay something with the beams or something like ah, that. So, okay who knows god, god i always forget how loud wrestling rings are yes we were at a convention in uh connecticut and it wasn't a very big convention not like too many games we were right next to the wrestling ring and like all day long it's like bang like they did a lot of wrestling shows credit to them I, like i watched a bunch of them they were great yeah but like we're trying to talk it's like bang bang and i'm like oh my like, I, I wish we were like yeah. two tables over this yeah. is really loud and there's no like audience to drown it out it's like no it's just it's right. just there <laughs> um yeah so the match is getting ready kurt fuller kidnaps sam and then he calls Rip, and he's like, I want a good 10 minutes, and then you're going to go down. But or, I thought... Or we're going to rape somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the goal was to just get Rip on the network. Yeah. He's Probably got... Probably not. Why I mean, would you want him to lose on the network? Yeah, why does he care about Zeus? He's like, well, I got Rip. That's the one everyone liked. Yeah. Like, he wins either way. Yeah. He Either Zeus wins, and he still has his main guy, or Rip wins, and he now has the biggest wrestler in the world. You should, you should get a uh, what's his Marcel Wallace from uh, <laughs> Pulp Fiction. Marcel's you think that's, you're you're going to pride not, fucking with you? Yeah, yeah. I said fuck pride. <laughs> you go minutes, your ass goes down. Yeah, say it. <laughs> say it. ten minutes, my I ass wanna, goes down. I yeah. want a sequel to this where Col- Kurt Fuller and Hulk Hogan have to fight a gimp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy's dungeon. <laughs> they have to work together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kurt Fuller with the katana. <laughs> But this time they they use uh, my Sharona like he wanted to originally use. Him. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the match starts and Zeus is dressed like a robot, and I'm starting to think he is a robot. Like it, it, he seems like a robot. <laughs> Got the road wire in. road warriors uh, <laughs> shoulder pads on. Yeah. Um, he starts fighting Rip while he still has the belt on. I'm like, ah, oh, no, take the belt off. Those things are uncomfortable. Like, don't take those off. Take those off. And then again, God though, damn it! I forgot to bring the 24 seven championship belt. Uh, I, the one day we have a wrestler in and I forget the goddamn belt. <laughs> I do this gag where I just have people hold the belt over me. I bought like the actual. It's actually kind of funny. Well, we'll do it. And we could use Photoshop <laughs> and I'll just go like this. Um, so when the 24-7 belt came in, came out, everyone hated it. Yeah. 
Uh, someone tweeted when they put it on the store, like for pre-orders, someone tweeted like, why would anyone buy this? And to be a dick, I started a GoFundMe and I was like, I really want the 24 <laughs> seven championship belt. It's a dream of mine. And I didn't expect the fans of me to be assholes too. And they completely funded it. So I ended up buying the 24 seven belt. And like, is, any- it the, is it like a deluxe version with the real leather? Or oh yeah, it's real. It's like a legit like replica of belt. Uh, and nice. I was taking it, I take it to all the conventions and I had people take pictures of me where they're like, I'm on the floor and they're standing over me. Shout out to my boy, uh, uh, over at, my guys over at Wildcat Championship Belts who made the, make all the WWE belts. Oh, nice. And they also made me a nice custom BWO belt, which by noon I would have God damn, it. we both forgot our belt. Yeah. <laughs> How are my pants going to stay off? <laughs> but yeah, I saw him like wrestling with the belt. I'm like, no, those are uncomfortable. Don't wrestle with those on. Yeah. Speaking of Zeus being a robot, they should have done like uh, the evil Oscar Goldman, where the face comes off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's the you know know, why not? If if, if Rip has superpowers where he can fly through a uh, reinforced limo, yeah, why can't he be a robot? Who cares? Uh, But he's annihilating Rip in front of everyone. So Rip's not even giving them a good ten minutes. He's just getting his ass kicked. He didn't even get no, you know. You know, proper baby yeah. face shine, and I, I get that he's afraid to fight back because Sam is kidnapped. Yes, and if he wins, they kill her because apparently, look, no, matching is... wheelchairs. He didn't threaten to kill her. Matching, oh, be pushing right, right. two wheelchairs. Why is why is no one calling the cops no. in this universe? <laughs> This is the one time you should call the cops. No, he's going to rely on his, what, 60-year-oldish manager to go find her. He's like, go, uh, go find uh, Sam. I'm and also my, I'm on handicap, it, my handicapped brother's friend who's only in this movie because we got to the part where we handicapped the brother and we're like, oh, shit, the old guy needs a guy. So we wrote in. That's what I think. Yeah. We wrote in that the handicapped brother has a friend, I guess. <laughs> Who cares? They booked it on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> Zeus rips up that the turnbuckle. Awesome. That was awesome. He breaks the turnbuckle off. Somehow all the ropes come off it. I don't know how. I don't know how that worked. Uh, and he goes to like just stab Hulk Hogan. That reminds. Me, wasn't there a spot where like the Berserker uh, put a sword? He's trying to stab the Undertaker. Stab the Undertaker, and, and the sword <laughs> goes right through. Yeah. Another precursor. There you go. So many murders in wrestling. Yeah. Uh, how many times have they murdered the Undertaker? He just keeps coming back. Yeah. I guess. Again, are you scared every time you get in the ring that someone's gonna like stab you or bury you alive? Or <laughs> I've been in the ring with New Jack, so <laughs> uh... fucking I fucking love. Oh uh, <laughs> man, I was so, I fucking love New Jack. He's the best. Oh my god, he was great. Like I, he's he, very misunderstood. Uh, very, very. There, there are people who get annoyed when I talk about how great New Jack is. I'm like, shut up. New Jack was awesome. Like, he was. I don't, like, I, don't a... I don't think I misunderstood him. <laughs> 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 I knew what I was getting when I was watching the New Jack match. Again, he was one of the best actors I ever worked with. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, everyone's he, like, oh, he, man, I'd be so uncomfortable around him. I'm like, no, he was great. He's, he's, he's more like Denzel's friend. <laughs> <laughs> Not Denzel, but Denzel's friend. You know? I told it before, but when we had him ad-libbing in that movie. Yeah. Uh, he, for some reason, he settled on accusing the bartender of being racist for not having pictures of black people up. But the bartender was black, and I, I don't think New Jack realized that. <laughs> he just went along with it. I'm like, I get that he was light-skinned, but that is very clearly a black man that you were pretending <laughs> is a white man and accusing him of being racist. <laughs> and even the actor was just kind of like, <laughs> like we noticed it between takes. He would just look off camera and be like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? He's just being ironic. <laughs> <laughs> ironic New Jack. Yeah. God, again, I was so sad when that happened. Like, yeah. I, I, It was bad. Um... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So he rips out the the pole, goes to stab him. Uh, they make their way out of the ring. Uh, okay, oh, oh. Can, can, can I jump backwards? Real? Yeah. New Jack is in my blue heaven. Oh, uh, good. Say, good. Say, good. Yeah, I had to work in a pun there. You know. <laughs> um, oh, Rip! Rip gets the courage to fight back because he sees Randy's pinky move. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then he sees Sam. He sees Sam's alive. Sam and the pinky. Yes, yes. Uh, it's it's kind of like in war when they, you know, you're being held captive. You got to hold up a symbol to let them know that they're treating you bad or something. I'm just like, blink twice. Uh, you know. Uh, the, fa- the fight makes its way outside of the ring. Yeah. They end up on some platform. Hulk Hogan gets, I'm sorry, Rip gets kicked off the platform <laughs> and survives. 
Um, <laughs> well, I mean, he, you know, the giant got thrown off a of Kobo Hall. And, that's uh, true. You know, he that's came true. back to fight. You know, when they're in their uh, monster truck battle. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, my God. I remember watching that live as a kid uh, thinking it was awesome. And then when I watched it, I'm like, did Hulk Hogan murder the giant? Uh, and then he was just okay. <laughs> and they try to say he fell into the river, but he comes out and he's bone dry. Oh, and right. as you see the giant in the back with a hairdryer, like, I got to do my run. I mean, WCW had a fucking Yeti and stuff. Why were they even trying? They had an ice ninja. Why were they trying to be? Talk about attempted rape. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the huh. <laughs> they dry hump Hulk Hogan oh, in the middle of the ring. About that. <laughs> fucking, about that. fucking it. How weird is it that Chucky is a canon universe uh, character in the WCW WWE lore? Yeah. They just put him on NXT. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when you watch wrestling, you got to realize, oh, Chucky and the Muppets and <laughs> Pee Wee Herman all exist in the shared universe, and the Three Stooges, but the reboot Three Stooges, not even the original. The WWE universe is very, very confusing. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, they they are fighting. Uh, Kurt Fuller is so mad that Zeus is losing, but I assume the ratings have to be great. But he just apparently starts, not because he, he wants it off the air. Yeah, he starts <laughs> ripping the wires out of the TVs. Like, no, no one's gonna watch this. Blah, Zeus, get up there, kill him, kill him. Very counterproductive. Yeah, <laughs> and costly. Uh, so then Rip murders Zeus. Cut to Tony Schiavone when I interviewed him. He killed him. He literally killed the guy. He killed the guy. Yeah. Hulk Hogan killed Zeus or whatever his name was. He just goes, he killed him. Yeah, right. <laughs> he killed him at the end. And like, it's legit. So he falls through the ring. Somehow he made it into the center. That's a... <laughs> he had a lot of, uh, a lot of again though his eyes are closed so uh, and there's maybe, blood coming uh, out that of is his true mouth. there was blood coming out of his mouth technically if this movie's being a little bit more realistic everyone should just be covered in blood because right. yes. of how brutally they're getting beaten true this is the only time we see blood in just a little bit so he's straight up dead and rip is about to murder kurt fuller <laughs> but i guess they were like oh he can't really murder like a like a shrimpy nobody so like they have kurt fuller kill himself on accident he like electrocutes Chris. himself and like fries himself and, and everyone cheers which is a uh callback to uh I'm, i might be going deep with this reference the movie strange brew okay where the uh the guy who's been putting all the mind control stuff in the beer <laughs> and he backs oh, up I'll into the, uh, the night boards and the <laughs> lights yeah, are shining yeah, yeah. Just like, uh, but yeah it's a, so strange everyone brew. in the building Take just off, eh? yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Jelly Donut. Everyone in the building just starts cheering. I'm like, is there no security here? Like, they somebody... start going ECW, <laughs> ECW, <laughs> ECW. They should have all threw chairs in the ring. Terry Funk. That's one of my favorite videos. Like, Terry Stop Funk would have been perfect for the, the bar scene with, with uh, Stan Hansen. Look, he got to be in Roadhouse, which we can all agree is the greatest movie ever made. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Terry Funk, like, once you're in Roadhouse, you're not, you're not being true. He, he, he was like, no, I know. Anything else is a step down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anything's a step down after Roadhouse. Terry Funk is in an episode of Thunder in Paradise. I think he makes a giant robot dragon that Hulk Hogan needs to disassemble. And he's in Over the Top. Oh, that's right. He is an over the top. And he got you. Yeah, he uh, Stallone throws him through the uh, the door. Oh yeah, fucking over the top. I should review that one day. That movie. Yeah. A watch, lot of professors in that movie. Did too. you ever watch that documentary? We have it over there. The Canon Pictures documentary. Yes. Yes. I love that the the writer of that movie said he was crying in the theater, and the the producer was like, "I knew you'd be emotional," and he's like, "I was crying because I thought my career was over." <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, everyone is thrilled that Rip is has murdered one person and is responsible for the death of the other in voluntary manslaughter, I guess. I think it's attempted manslaughter. He was about to throw him into that electricity. Right. <laughs> um, and then there's a freeze frame. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have my final note here is this movie is fucking stupid. I love it. Oh, <laughs> I think we can all relate. <laughs> so bad. It's good. Dookie. Dookie. So as a uh, professional wrestler, yes. How accurate is this film? Are you oh, it's a it's spot on. <laughs> so do, do rival federations send people to murder you all the time? There, there is a story. Ooh. Uh, Jim Ross has told. Is where this a shoot? This is a shoot, brother. Oh. Uh, one time, uh, you know, Vince is taking over 
all the territories. You know, he he bought WWE WWF mm. from his father, and he started you know taking out all these little territories and signing up their uh, talent. Mm. So Jim Ross is at the annual NWA convention, and he's in the bathroom. He's in the facilities, and here's two people walk in, and they talk about murder, plotting to murder Vince McMahon in real life. Oh shit! And Jim Ross said he heard that, and he lifted his feet off the floor <laughs> because he didn't, you know, he didn't want anybody you know, looking around. He was like, uh, but yeah, Jim Ross. Legit. I'm not Jim Ross. Uh. Oh my God. <laughs> and they were like, "Who was this?" And he's like, "I didn't even want to know. I didn't want to know." But two people were like, "Yeah, let's just whack him." Jesus Christ! Not no nope, straight lace. Yeah, let's just kill him. He's he's hurting our business. Jim Ross told that story. Yeah, it's I, out there. It, he, I love Jim Ross's podcast, by the way. He's amazing. It's so good. He's amazing. I love when he just talks about the history of wrestling and whatnot and trying yeah. to keep. I love he mentioned he's like, yeah, it was kind of ridiculous. We were trying to keep kayfabe like a guy would get punched 10 times in a row and not have any swelling. We were kind of like, it's like people do like, all right. I, yeah. And I and I said, you're wrong, Jim Ross. Wrestling is real. And I believe everything. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. There, there's a newspaper article. Maybe in the late fifties, early sixties, where mm. Vince's dad says, "Well, if we really did, we're doing the things we would, uh, we're yeah. doing people. A lot of people would be in the hospital." Yeah, right. You know? I mean, like, isn't I hate when people try to do that as like a gotcha. Yeah. Like, you know, it's fake. It's like, yeah, who cares? So uh, I, I got it. Uh, so Star Wars. They yeah, no, really I got into an argument at the one bar because like, uh, there's one bar around here that actually puts wrestling on, and this guy's like, "Hey, you know, it's fake." I'm like. Yeah, uh, do you think the dragons of Game of Thrones are real? Like, who cares? I I took that logic to my advantage. Uh, I go I was at my favorite watering hole in South Philly called McCuskers, mm. and uh, the Eagles had lost. A, you know, I'm a big Philadelphia Eagles fan. No. and they had got blown out that day. And you know, I'm sitting at the bar, and these two uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fans walk in, and they're all in their garb and the, the jerseys. Real like, quick. Heinz uh, Field is yeah. where we filmed my scene in the Dark Knight Rises. A little out of frame. But, a little out of frame. Little, but I'm there. I'm behind the goalpost. <laughs> but anyway, continue, continue. And uh, these guys are just being total knuckleheads. And they're like, you know, the, 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 the Steelers are winning this great game. And they're, you know, shit talking. And then they said something about the Eagles. I was like, what do you care? <laughs> Football's fake anyway. <laughs> Straight face. No, whatever. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, it's not. I was like, they got a playbook. That's that's their high spots. That's how they call their spots. They got the headphones. Hey, we're going to play this play. You run that play. And I'm being straight laced. Right? Straight faced, right? Yeah. They're like, no. Da, 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 da. I played in high school. You know, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, well, high school. I did high school wrestling. Yeah, yeah. but the cherry on the top of this story is, you know, uh, my, a fr- a fr- my friend Bob comes in. Bob uh, Chenari comes in. And uh, he's friends with them, friends with me. They go, Bob, please be the, the, the voice of reason in this argument. Is, is football, what's your opinion on football? And Bob, without any coaching for me, goes, well, it's a lot like professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. They got mad and they just left. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that one was Stone Cold's podcast with Shane McMahon. Where he's like, how do you feel about the like? Uh, it's not like boxing. He's like, yeah, well, you know, they say boxing's real, but it's, it's like, yeah, boxing has a history. I mean, Pulp Fiction yeah. was Pulp Fiction didn't just come up with that. Yeah, there's a history of like you're gonna take a fall. Uh, and we're betting on the, like it's everything. Yeah, whatever. It's entertainment. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's there's different ways you can work things. You know, yes. whether it's telling somebody to take a dive or purposely overmatching somebody. You know, yeah. take somebody. You know, twenty years experience against. I, I this. never tell anyone to take a dive. I tell them to take a leak all the time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> take, take a, a leak. leak. Take a leak. Jockass. Jockass. So anyway, thank you so much for coming. Oh, this is great. This was awesome. We have to have you back again sometime. Maybe then uh, we'll do Mr. Nanny. I, I will brush up on Mr. Nanny. <laughs> I, I did not see that in the theater. Ah. But, uh, you know. I, but yeah, I know that dog scene very, very well. <laughs> dude, it's it's one of those, you know, those... <laughs> those uh, things where you, you know you thought you saw i can't think the mandela effect <laughs> yes you know? yes yes so uh meanie where can we find you what's your home address uh what's the, what's uh, the key combination to your go door? out the door make a left <laughs> uh if you want to you know support the blue meanie go to wrestlingtees.com slash blue meanie where you can get one of these snazzy blue order shirts uh i also have a podcast called mind of the meanie which drops 
every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Go to mindedamini.com, which was a lot like this conversation where we're just we talk about movies, music, oh, sports, shit. tons of new useless knowledge. You should have me on there. I'd be on there. Oh my god! I mean, I don't want to invite myself to your. But- I just, I just pulled a stutter and John. Late. Well, you have a podcast uh, studio uh, here, so yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mind of the Meanie every uh, morning, Monday morning at, at 6 a.m. Uh, this show comes out Monday nights at 8. So you're going to get double the Meanie on this Monday whenever it airs. There you go. Uh, and uh, for a very good cause, uh, I right now have my own line of beard care products. Ooh. Go to madcatbeardcare.com. Uh, it's called Mad Cat Beard Care because... The owner takes that money. Uh, he uh, rescues feral cats. Mm-hmm. You know, takes them to the vet. Oh, nice! On, on his dime, so all the money that comes from the beard oils goes directly to helping feral cats. Awesome! So people love cats. Yes, yes, yes. Even though they're the biggest heels in the world, <laughs> they are, they we really still are. love them. But uh, yeah, and then uh, of course I'm in the wonderful game. Yes, Mike. Retro Mania. Where can we find more about you? And where can we find this wonderful game? Retromania Wrestling's on uh, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, uh, PlayStation, Steam, iArcade, soon to be on the Epic Game Store. Awesome. Uh, and uh, RetrosoftStudios.com or RetromaniaWrestling.com for all the information. Yes, and I am, as of right now, granting you permission to put any Hack the Movie stuff in the game. All right. I would love, a wrestling, I would love a wrestling ring in the VHS store. I, I mean, you don't have to make me a playable character, but if you do, I would like Zeus's move set. <laughs> all right. So all I right. just want to come out like this. Uh, we walk in like that, and I and I have to pick a woman up by her face and throw okay. her. That's all I want in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, that, that, that character is really me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you can get me in there, and I, I can brag about that. You can work something out. We'll be like Dark Knight Rises, <laughs> <laughs> Retro Mania Wrestling. Yes, and um. I implore everyone to watch Swamp Zombies 1 and only Swamp Zombies 1. Sorry, Crystal. You're in the last Jedi of Swamp Zombies. We only <laughs> like Swamp Zombies 1. Swamp Zom- Can I get you on record saying Swamp Zombies 2 was not canon? Uh, uh, hold on, was that? Not, <laughs> not canon. Oh. I, oh, absolutely. Swamp Zombies 2 was not only not canon, it was definitely not Electric Boogaloo either. <laughs> so... That's great. And maybe one day I can uh, strike up a conversation with Len and do Swamp Zombies 3 Redemption. But 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 Redemption, but with like a 3 instead of an E. <laughs> Swamp Zombies 3. Fuck part 2. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it from us. Goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talking about tapes.